Global Tel Link, you have a prepaid call from Una. an inmate at the R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility, San Diego, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using Global Tel Link. Uh, hey, Joe. Yeah. So what's up? Yeah. So um, back to the interview, uh, yeah. back to the interview, homie. I mean, you know, um, you know what I mean. Like, um, these questions are basically like, if you feel me, like, so you know, I mean, so it'll hit them. You feel me? So you know, you want, you know, what I mean, the, Hell the yeah. hit them hard. I got something to tell you. Okay. I got something to tell you. You know, we have a, a, a over here. This prison was on the news for. The worst outbreak in CDCR history. We had over 400, 600 inmates infected in less than two weeks of COVID. A whole bunch of inmates over here are dying. We'll complain like I'm gonna give you an example of myself. Uh, around Christmas time, I told the, the the nurse I couldn't breathe. I felt like I was drowning in my lungs. I couldn't breathe. I was uh like dizzy, couldn't walk straight like I was drunk. And uh, they called the ambulance. The ambulance came, picked me up, took me to TTA, CTC. I get to TTA and the nurse and doctor, the first thing they do is, he probably, uh, he probably high on some oxygen. I'm like, hold up, I don't even mess around. So don't even get at me like that. And they telling me, uh, okay, well, it's probably just gas. Yeah, you probably got gas, so we're gonna just give you some uh, uh, some hand acids and send you back. Within five minutes, they sent me back to my cell. That night, all night, to the next morning, I was suffocating, couldn't breathe. Couldn't breathe, I was suffocating. Then finally, in the morning, I complained to the nurse. They picked me up, took me to the doctor, and the doctor said, oh no. You got crackling in your lungs, I got to send you for an x-ray. I get an x-ray, next thing I know, not even five minutes later, after they took the x-ray, they sent an ambulance to pick me up. They said, hey man, we got to take you to the hospital. You got COVID-19 pneumonia. Now, around that time, four people, one of them is uh, my best, one of my friends, died of COVID. They were all, everyone was complaining they couldn't breathe. And the first thing staff was saying, oh, they probably, uh, it's probably just gas. They weren't even testing us, though. They said, uh, hey, if you ever look up this prison, how many people was dying over here? And she got me pissed. Yeah. So, uh, that's what we're going through right now. So they intensely infecting us over here, you know. And uh, right now, they all wearing body cameras. They got a new uh, court order. They got cameras every few feet. They got cameras on the entire yard. All the CEOs are working on body cameras now. So they stop acting uh, like they've been acting. Now when they get at you, they get at you with respect, you know? Yeah. But uh, as long as you're standing in front of that camera, they ain't going to do nothing. Can you, can you can you elaborate or explain about you know when you were active and you know as far as like you know I mean the prison gangs in there and, and the rules and stuff like that you feel me like you know when pe you know people catch rap yeah, when I was, like uh, that. yeah so I was uh, you know I was uh, I was one of those uh, one of the Usos right there that was a uh, uh, influential in the car and stuff so every time we had a homie that was messing up that wouldn't pay his bills or something like that. You know, I'll be, I was one of the ones that was like, oh, stab him, stab him. Oh no, hold him up, hold him up, stab him. If it's the first time, second, if it's the first time, we should talk to him. The second time, we will discipline him. Third time, yeah, if, if we don't discipline him the second time, we'll stab him the next time he does it. So that's how it was and stuff. Uh, uh, you know, uh, if you see a brother right there on the yard uh, that you think he needs help, you got to go over there. You don't go over there, you're getting it too. You know, uh, uh, was uh, real uh, 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 stringent with that paperwork. If you didn't have your paperwork, you on uh, 
you gonna be uh, under investigation with the homies. We gonna find out what you're busted for. And you know, uh, usually somebody comes over with the paperwork, you know, but that's one of the main things: is paperwork. Make sure you're solid. You don't know nothing. Don't see nothing. Don't talk. You know, just uh, it was it was a uh, it was a system. It was a system, man. Uh. In fact, uh, uh, a few years ago, I was uh, I'm one of the plaintiffs out of all the others in the state of California, Asian Pacific Islanders. I'm the only one in the validation lawsuit that was a main plaintiff. Uh, so now, there's no more validation. All the Mexican Mafia, NF, uh, ABs, BGS, they're all on the yard now. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a whole different thing, man. I've seen a whole prison system just change. And, uh, it's just, it's just crazy, dog. Uh, no, I'm not proud of what I did. I, uh, I regret everything I did, because now that I've gotten older, man, it's just like, shit, now I see these youngsters doing all that stuff. I just say, damn, man, I should act like that. You know, it just, it just looks stupid to me and stuff. And uh, now, I could have been up for parole in 2022, but all the sticking, all the trouble I got into, extended my release date. Earliest possible release date to like uh, 40, 47 or 43. And uh, it was up to 2052, but I've been doing good and they kept cutting off time and stuff. So right now I'm waiting to... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To a lower level, man, because uh, they got that new thing on behavior override. If you stay disciplinary free for like up to two, three years, you can go to a lower level. I've been clean for seven years. And uh, I just never pushed the issue going to a lower level, but now... It's going to release a whole bu a lot more people from the lower levels than they are in level fours. So, it, it, can you explain, like, your, your time in level four and, you know what I mean, like, you know, where you were at and uh, were you in the shoe or, you know what I mean, anything of that nature or, you know what I mean, you know, um, you know what I mean, like, things of that nature, man, where you were, like, you know, high ranking or, you know what I mean, or you met, you know, anyone that was high ranking and homies and stuff like that? Yeah, when I came in, when I came in on this case in 98, was when I got out in 98, I kept going in and out of prison. And then uh, last time I got out, was I was in, was April 98. I got out, and then a couple weeks later, I ended up shooting the cop in front of the house. And uh, that's what I'm doing time for now. So ever since uh, I've been in prison, you know, they had me... Uh, in a Calipat C yard, you know, I was over there with the uh, the, the homies and stuff. Uh, Mars and uh, you know, just all of us uh, running a mark right there and stuff, getting in trouble, just you know, just gang bang, representing the Pacific Islanders, Asian Pacific Islanders. Uh, you know, uh, from there, I end up catching a couple of tips and murders on staff right there on C yard. And they, Rolled me up, took me to uh, Sentinella. I caught another case in Sentinella. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Uh, it was a homie named Spider from uh, TRT. He was with me when uh, when we uh, jumped on one of the, uh, the Tongans right there named Sony. So um, from there I went to Cork and I did four years in Cork and Shoe. And uh, from there, from Cork and Shoe, they sent me to Sad F. I was in Sad F, uh, 180, right there, the 180 yard, with the uh, same dudes and stuff. The loud homie named Ali was my celly. Uh, uh, Creeper from TRG was there with me. The homie uh, uh, Kojak from loud homie from Las Vegas Horny Boys. Uh, Glock from TR. Uh, 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 you know, it was a gang of us right there. 
Yeah, I ended up getting in trouble right there because I was a, a, a MAC uh, a executive body. So they on the uh, over some issues, he was trying to roll up one of the uh, the monitor was right there in the yard because he was an uh, informant. We found out he was an informant, and while I was trying to roll him up, they rolled me up. They had me in the hole for eight months under investigation, and from there, I went to New Folsom. I was on New Folsom B yard. That's the 180 yard. I was over there with a uh, little deep right there too and stuff. And while I was there, I was only uh, off the hole for like 40 days. And uh, I caught another attempted murder right there on one of the uh, the inmates based on the fact that he was also uh, 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 considered a snitch. We had paperwork, so uh, you know, uh, I stabbed him 22 times and Cut his throat, and uh, I was proud of it and stuff, you know. And uh, went to the hole, caught another case on my celly. I slit one of my celly's necks in the cell. Then uh, from there, they took me back to corporate shoe. I did four years and an extra year of indeterminate shoe. From there, they released me. I go to Salinas. In 2009, when I get there, the the homies, the East Pacific Islanders, were at war with the white boys on Sea York. So, uh, you know, the, it, was, it, was a, it was a big old uh, uh, battle with the white boys and stuff. And uh, 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 I was over there, Salinas, 2009, 10, 11. Then they sent me, I went to the hole, got out. Went to D yard, uh, D uh, E seven. I was there two years, and then they he sent me back to the hole because I got caught with some weapons. And uh, when I got out the hole, they sent me back to D yard one eighty. So while I'm out there at D yard, I get a uh, you no. Know, uh, they said they sent me uh, to Lancaster for a. Uh, medical. I get to Lancaster. I was in Lancaster for like 10 months and they said, hell no. We sent him back to Salinas. I get back to Salinas. I'm on B yard. And now I'm right there with the, uh, with the, uh, yeah, we were deep right there with the homies on B yard. Uh, it's a 270. And, uh, I went back to, uh, that's with that dope, man. I was not happy about that because I spent thousands. I won a settlement for fifteen thousand five hundred dollars, and guess what I did with it? I paid off my restitution and stuck the rest in my veins. So I had I ended up catching a MRSA in my lungs. They had me in the hospital for like three months. They they cut my chest open, removed the lower part of my lung to save my life. And then I got out of the hospital. I was still doing the same thing. Yeah, I got right back into the dope scene. You have 60 seconds remaining. And then, you know, just, it was from there, man. I, I got to the point where I got sick and tired. I was getting sick and tired. And I finally said, you know what, I'm probably quit. It's time for me to change my life, man. So from there, I changed my life and stuff. Gave everything to God and I've been praying. And, Try my best to be a better person, you know? You know, is it cool that I put, like, you know, where you were from before or not? Nah? What do you want me to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, cause, uh, you know, I ain't tripping, dog. You know, I ain't to say no more. Okay. So whatever you... it is to help people, do it.